today on an all-new Dr. Phil. You said you were abducted, sex trafficked, spent your birthday chained to a bed. Megan would reveal even more news, news that would change everything. Oh, my God. You're hearing this for the first time. Hear me. You have absolutely zero responsibility for that. Zero, zero, zero. You have 100% accountability for what you do about it now. Today's going to be a changing day in your life. You've never had anybody working harder to bring you to the threshold of change than right now. 26-year-old Megan claims from the age of seven, she was repeatedly sexually abused and raped. Megan says the two people who adopted her and were supposed to protect her threw her out onto the streets where she was raped over a hundred times. If that wasn't shocking enough, Megan says she spent her 21st birthday chained to a bed, having been abducted, beaten, and sex trafficked. Megan's mother, Beth, emailed me for help. She says even though her daughter's trauma left her non-functioning, Megan needs to pull herself together and get a job because she and her husband, Steve, are done bankrolling her. Take a look. I feel like my daughter, Megan, is traumatized and a complete mess. Our daughter's dysfunction has turned our lives upside down. I admit it, I feel like I'm the daughter from hell. I am one of those daughters that you only hear about on TV. Oh. <laughs> By the time Megan was a senior in high school, she was out of control. I was very promiscuous. She ran away six times. She would go away for a week at a time or a couple days, and at one time it was several weeks. When Megan was 18, we had to kick her out. She wasn't following the rules. At the time, it was a joint decision. It was um, a tough love situation. Since we kicked Megan out, she has lived in cars. Parks with boyfriends, with the boyfriend's family. She was making bad choices. She was telling us about being abused and being raped. It was painful. I've probably been pregnant over 12 times. With uh, several abortions and numerous uh, miscarriages, anything we tried to do would backfire. At one point, we even bought a condo for her. That quickly fell apart. I was always partying and hanging out with friends, living the good life. We told Megan she had to get out. I left a picture frame with a knife through my mom's face and a poem that read basically, screw you guys. Several years ago, Megan vanished, and we didn't know where she was for a couple of months. I was abducted and sex trafficked. I was drugged and abused. They would inject me with uppers when the Johns were coming, and cuffed me to a bed on oh, my 21st birthday. I wanted to make sure I didn't run away. We got a call from Megan asking if we would pick her up. What went through our minds was, here we go again. Well, just days ago, Megan would reveal even more news. News that would change everything. To say the least, we thought we'd seen it all. How could things get any worse? A few days ago, Megan broke the news that she's five months pregnant. My mom, she walked away, she wouldn't hug me, she wouldn't talk to me, and she just blurted out that she was done. But Megan insists she's keeping this baby. Given what she's been through, I don't believe she's ready to be a mother in any way, shape, or form. I'm in shock. I'm just scared to death for her. Okay. Um, you made a comment that you didn't see how this could get any worse, and then it got worse. Yes, and it always gets worse. We never know what to expect from one day to the next. Right. So now she's five months pregnant. And what's your relationship with her now? You have a different relationship with her than you do, correct? Yes, yes that's, that's correct. Uh, so you're not on the same level of communication and exchange with her. You're more confrontive with her. Very much so, yes. Okay. And so, I get angry quickly, and then the relationship explodes, and I won't talk to her for a couple of months or a couple of weeks at a time. All right. But you keep the communications open. I do generally. All right. Although I've lost contact to over certain situations, but all right. It's there. And she feels that you two are both to blame for the situation she's in. Has she expressed that to you? And what's her rationale as you understand it? 
Why is this your problem? Well, that's the first time I'm hearing this one. Um, Same here. I haven't heard her express that. I haven't that. heard her say that because she's always, I thought, thankful for what we've tried to help her do. I mean, we'd like her to, you know, grow up and be 26 and act 26 and be responsible. She says you've kicked her out. Right. And she says that putting her on the street has led to her being abused and sexually abused and her life going down the... The, the gutter and all of these things, and that if you didn't want her, why did you adopt her? I mean, that's basically what she's saying to us. Uh, well, why why did you adopt her? We wanted a family from day one. When you adopted Megan, she was how old? Four months old. Okay, and what did you know about her at the time? Oh, that's so cute. Um, we found out that her birth mother had been on drugs. And we didn't know that when we were put in contact with the birth mother uh -huh. asking us if we wanted to adopt her. Okay. And was she on drugs while she was pregnant with the child? Yes. Okay. And yes. you knew that? It was and crack? I knew that. Yes. Yeah, for okay. the first yes. trimester, she said, after that, no. Okay. And when you heard that, did it cause you concern about what very it might alarming. have done to her neurologically or otherwise? Very alarming, yes. We came home and I called several doctors and they said, you have no guarantees if you have your own children, whether they're going to be healthy or not. So we decided to do it. And along the way, did she hit the developmental benchmarks the way a, a, a child would be expected to in no. terms of reading, learning, all of that? Or no. was she behind the curve? Yeah, she was always behind the curve, but always been able to pass to the next grade. The teachers always wanted her to go to the next grade. Okay. It was at age right. three when things started being really difficult. Mm -hmm. The teacher came to us and said, uh, you need to go see a doctor about Megan's behavior in the classroom. Okay, and my point is, do you believe that there are neurological, physiological differences with her because of her environment in utero? Oh, yes. Or do you think this is all just psychological rebellion? No, no. So I you think some of this is neurological? The whatever she was diagnosed with ADHD and how she interacted okay. with people, how people interacted with her, mm -hmm. her ability to make friends, her ability to keep friends. Mm -hmm. I think it it just I can't say destroyed, but I think it definitely affected her personality. Okay. So this years. isn't just all her making bad choices. Some of this no. is is involuntary on her I part, I think so. Believe. I really believe that, yes. Okay. All right. And you say when she was a teen, then she became promiscuous. Right. And I did okay. not know that. Megan says that you were verbally and physically abusive uh, to her when she was a child. Verbally, yes. Physically, <clears throat> I remember lots of times, you know, grabbing her by the arm just to get her attention. Uh. And when I found out in senior year of high school that she was running away from swim team, and um, yes, I have grabbed her. Somebody has actually filed a CPS report against us. Well, and I asked the sheriff, well, how do you control your child? And he said, well, you can touch them, just don't leave marks. Well, she said you hit her with belts, hangers, and a vacuum. Uh, yeah. Uh, I have hit her. Yes, I have hit her. I don't remember a vacuum, but okay. I did use belt, yes, and I have washed her mouth out with soap, yes. Yeah. Um, and I'm just telling you so you can clarify this or, or debunk it. Well, I just want to know what I'm dealing with. Right. She said that you would wait for your husband to go out of town on trips because you were an airline pilot, correct? I was, yes. And that that's when you would aggress against her and you would do it in such a way that any marks would disappear by the time he got home. No, that's true. You, you saw bruises on her arms. Yes, I've seen some bruises, yeah. Uh -huh. And you said, when I said verbally and physically, you said verbally, yes, and then physically you had to think about. What kind of verbal abuse did you uh, heap upon her? I would uh, yell and scream a lot. So this, there it were just... times that this was a combat zone. Oh. Oh, yeah. Every night. Yeah, okay. So it didn't start out that way. Okay. It just built. It just built and built and built and built. Okay. And then school was, you know, behaviors at school, not following our rules. I mean, we weren't terribly strict, but we did have rules. We were strict. 
and seemed like a lot of children's parents were not. Okay, we're going to take a break. When okay. we come back, we're going to meet Megan, who says her mother, Beth, is a lunatic. And there's a good reason why she calls her the devil. Now, that's her side of it, and I, I think you've agreed that there have been some combative times, but I don't think you're confessing to being a lunatic. Uh, but that's her description, and we'll give you a chance to respond to everything. And then I'm going to tell you why I want to be transparent about all this. We'll be right back. If you ask me, my mom has failed me since day one. Growing up with my parents, my mom was very abusive. When I told my parents I was pregnant, they just kind of stared at me. I know I'm going to be a really good mother to my child, that I will never do anything that my mom did to me. Tomorrow. When you were three, she had you playing with knives, right? She was putting insulin in your milk. She force-fed you coins, right? She'd hold me and make me eat them. This is when you were two. I was barricaded inside a dog cage. We're talking about a lot of children. 12, including myself. Tomorrow. Who the hell could do this to a child? Then on Friday. He shot four guys. If he says, we're going to rob an armored car today. I would drive off a cliff with this man. You're ride or die. Ride or die. That's Friday. When it comes to Megan, we have absolutely enabled her. For the past three years, my husband and I have supported Megan. We pay for everything. She's 26 years old and we're still taking care of her. My mom belittles me. She makes me feel like I'm charity case. My mindset is to keep her off the street to try to protect her from further abuse. I'm a firm believer in tough love. I feel like when mom and dad are paying her expenses, she doesn't have to go get the job to pay the bills. Well, not only does Megan claim she was sexually abused as a child and repeatedly raped, she also says that she woke up on her 21st birthday to find herself chained to a bed, having just been sex trafficked. Now, Megan says her family let her down when she needed them the most. I feel like I've been through hell. If you ask me, my mom has failed me since day one. If I had to rate my mom, she wouldn't even be on the scale. Growing up with my parents, my mom was very abusive. My mom would call me multiple names. One of her favorites was retard. My mom would hit, kick. My dad was an airline pilot, and he'd be gone for sometimes a week. My mom would take advantage of my dad's traveling times, and she would be very abusive right when he left, so by the time he came back, everything was healed. When it comes to my dad, he has one of the biggest hearts you'll ever know. It upsets me that he doesn't take sides sometimes. There's sometimes where he just sits in the middle. When I found out I was pregnant this time, I was extremely happy. When I told my parents I was pregnant, they just kind of stared at me. I will not be a babysitter on a regular basis. I'm not going to give up our travel plans. No doubt about it, I'm keeping this child. I have everything that this baby needs already. I already have the crib. I, I have the car seat. All I literally need is a stroller and a baby bag. I know I'm going to be a really good mother to my child, but I will never do anything that my mom did to me to this child. Why would you adopt me if you were going to treat me like this? I love you guys. Love you too. OK, now. Let me, I, I just want to say something before we start to all three of you and, and you since you've just walked out. My number one priority is this unborn child. Mm -hmm. right. What kind of world this unborn child is going to come into? What kind of family dynamic this unborn child is going to come into? You said your mother is a lunatic. Is that really your position? You believe this woman is a lunatic? I believe at moments, yeah. You, you do fly off the handle. I do call you the devil. That is how I feel because someone who can know that their daughter has neurological issues or, or issues in school and still <laughs> puts her out on the street, that's hard on me, okay? As well as knowing what I've been through and still throwing me out on the street, that's hard on me. 
here's what you told us when we did a very thorough interview with you, yes. as we did with y'all. You said from 5 to 17, right. physically and emotionally abused by your mother, called, quote, retard, kicked, hit in the face, hair pulled, hit with a vacuum. All this happened between the ages of 5 and 17. Correct, sir. Hey, well, I don't remember hitting you in the face, but I did grab you by the arms quite a May few I times. May I interject and say um, washing my mouth out with soap? Yeah, my mom washed my mouth out with soap, too. So but we maybe... would wrestle in the bathroom for quite some time before the soap actually got in the mouth. Oh. You were strong. <laughs> so were you. <laughs> Do you all agree that that happened? I didn't know anything about it. I kept it a secret. I kept it a secret. Never heard that. Oh, my God. You're yeah, hearing I, this for the first time. Yeah. Okay, ages seven to nine, you, you say you were repeatedly sexually abused. Yeah. But okay. uh, to add on to that, I also did put myself in those situations, to be honest how I feel because I I was young and I did not really know what sex was or, or how to be treated towards a man and a man treats me, you know. So I did kind of put myself out there maybe a little bit more than I should have. Well, no, that's, that's not no. true at all. Uh, that's not right, Megan. That's yeah. not true at all. That's, uh, none of this was their fault. Do you all agree that that happened? I didn't know anything about it. Until, I kept it like, a secret. I, I kept it a secret. Never heard the, I, no. yeah. Oh, my God. I have You're never, hearing I, this for the first time. Yeah. Well, two, a couple okay. days ago. Hear me. You have absolutely zero, zero responsibility for that. Zero, zero, zero. Responsibility for that. It's not about putting yourself out there too much or whatever. You're a child. You have zero responsibility for what happened to you as a child. You have 100% accountability for what you do about it now. Yes, I want to get better. All right. Age 17 to 18, you say you were drugged and raped 100 times. Yes, sir. And. How, how did this happen? I would like to say what I said before and say that I put myself out there, but you're telling me that that's not, not, <clears throat> that's I not have, my fault. I've gotten angry with her because I said it wasn't what happened to her enough and what happened to her wasn't her fault at all. It's just the choice she made to get to that point. Can I interject? That's you have told me it was my fault. No, no. I have not, Megan. You have told me that because of the way I've acted and because of the things that I have worn. No, I don't agree with that. Okay. I, I, I did, I did But whatever she perceived you have said before, you don't say that now. No, I don't say that now. <clears throat> and I don't believe that either. It was not her fault what happened to her. This was with older men? Yes, usually older men. And at age 20 to 21, you said that you were abducted, sex trafficked, and spent your 21st birthday chained to a bed. <laughs> and you were abducted off the street? Yeah, I asked for a stupid cigarette. I was trying to bum a cigarette off someone. In a car? Yeah. You, you walked up to a car? Yeah. And, and asked? For a cigarette. And I took a couple puffs of the cigarette, and next thing I knew, I was waking up in a hotel room with this outfit on and told to go, please, men. Someone grabbed you and pulled you into the car? Uh, honestly, it started to be a blur after the second or third puff of the cigarette. So you think there was something in it? Yes, I'm very positive. Oh, I never heard that. Okay. You, you think it was laced with something? Yes. Uh-huh. And you were held for how long? Uh, it felt like months, but I, I think it we said it was three months. No, no. No? It was like, like two. 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 Two months. <clears throat> two months. Okay, and... And she got, we got the call. She said, will you come and get me? And I begged you. I begged you guys yeah, to come and pick me up. Yeah, we had a discussion whether we were coming to pick you up, whether yeah. we were going to help okay. you once how, again. How did you get free? It was like a 30-minute conversation. They beat me up and left me in the hotel room. And a maid found me 
the next morning and brought me down to the front desk and said, who can we call? And that's when I called my parents and I had to beg them for a good 30 minutes before you guys said that you would even come. Exactly. And then after I told and you what was she beaten when you found her? Yes, and she yes. had a concussion. Yes, we took her to the emergency a couple of days later because her head was hurting so bad. And it, it, she had been beaten? Yes. 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 She had contusions on her face. Uh -huh. My face is all lumpy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Steve says his worst fear became a reality when his daughter, Megan, accused him of sexually molesting her. Uh, we'll talk about that when we come back. A few years ago, Megan accused her dad of touching her inappropriately. Megan accused me of molesting her at one point. Well, the allegations Megan made against me just devastated me at the time. And it took me a while before I even wanted to be alone with her. I'd accused my dad of being one of the guys that would pay for me when I was abducted. The trauma that I had been through, I was creating lies inside my head. The truth finally came out, and she admitted that this was not something that occurred. We've had to go to counseling to deal with her drama. Well, Megan says that after she accused her father of sexually molesting her, she withdrew the claim and apologized. So what was the motive behind these allegations? I was really messed up in the head when I came back, and I thought that he was somebody that would, like, that would pay for, for women. And there was a time when we were all at Christmas, and I was in the bathroom, and I thought that I told you to, to, to not come in, and, and I was, someone's in here, and then you pushed it open and said, oh, sorry, you're, you're in there. And I, to me, because of what I had been through, I thought that you were trying to push the door open and trying to come in. I now know that that is not true. I now know that I was really messed up and I really needed counseling at that time, and I'm sorry for accusing you of that. But yes, I, at the time, I honestly believed that you were one of them. And I'm really sorry. You're, you're very clear that you, you make no allegation towards your father whatsoever of Anymore. ever molesting you or being sexually inappropriate with you in any way whatsoever. No. Now, your greatest fear is that your parents are going to disown you because you're pregnant. I want them to know their grandchild. I want you guys to be a part of your life. Like, I, I want you to be there. I'm not asking you to be a babysitter because that's too much to ask of you. I am 26 years old and I need to take this on because I am the mother. But I would love you guys to be a part <clears throat> of your grandchild's life. But they pay your bills and, and you're afraid if, if they don't stay in your life that when that baby's born, you're not going to be in the delivery room alone because you're afraid that Child Protective Services is going to be there with you and they're going to take that baby. Yes, I'm very scared of that. And why would they do that? Because, uh, have you seen my home? <laughs> well, let's take a look at your home. I am a hoarder and that is obvious and, uh, I guess I don't like to clean, now do I? Well, that would be an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> no um, what is this room? My bedroom slash living room. Do, do you... Sleep there? Go yeah. in this room? <laughs> I don't. That's my bed. <laughs> do you lay down in here? Yeah. Dr. Phil, she was supposed to be working, paying the bills, and we were going to actually fix this place up. It actually looked better. We were, this is the room we started with. But when she quit working and lost the job and we were paying her bills, I, we put our foot down and said we weren't going to continue fixing this up. Upgrade. Yeah. We weren't going to upgrade it. She was supposed to pay for the expenses. We basically have paid for a car. We have, you know, and I'm, I'm tired of supporting her. I really am. You're 26 and you're going to have a baby. No, and I actually... am angry for five months now. She has hid this. It's, it's a nightmare. It is, our relationship isn't what it is, should be either at this point. And what I want to say is I did not tell them because I was scared that they were going to stop supporting me, paying my bills, paying for my food and everything like they are right now. And the oh, only yeah, thing I could think of was too. my child and making sure that I was able to get the items that I needed to be able to give my child a good life. 
Megan says that she has a lot of unanswered questions for her mother. I, I wonder if she still has those questions or not. And if so, we're going to click through those, at least the top ones on the list. And then I'm going to start talking about what I think needs to happen here, because I have a very clear view of what needs to happen here, in my opinion. We'll be right back. When it comes down to it, I've never felt love. I've never felt wanted. I have a few questions for my parents. Why would you put anyone through this if you weren't going to give it your all? Why would you kick me out of the house when you know all of the things that I've been through? And why did you give up on me? And why didn't you just give me another chance to show you that I really do want to be a part of this family? Why would you ever make anyone feel so worthless? Well, Megan says she has no idea why her parents adopted her in the first place. And I think I've asked you those questions before, and I don't know if I've ever gotten a really good answer. So I ask it again. Why did you guys adopt me and put me through this? Of me getting kicked out and me going through all of this, and when I would come back and tell you what I've been through, you would kick me out again. Maybe not then, maybe a couple weeks to months later. And I have a really big question for you, Mom. Why did you tell me I wasn't your daughter for a year? Why did you okay. disown me? I saw oh, you. When I didn't, couldn't talk to you? I saw you Because up I was emotionally broken, Megan. I couldn't deal with this. How do you think I felt? I know how you feel. I know how now how you feel. I've always loved you, Megan. But if you were I emotionally broken at the time, why didn't you think I was? Well, I probably knew you were, but I couldn't handle it. I can't, I am That's so broken, can, I can't handle the children. chaos oh. anymore, the drama anymore, your choices anymore. And Megan, we adopted you because we wanted a family, not just one child, but more than one child. And you and your brother never got along. It's been the school issues, it's been oh, know, daily drama and chaos every single day day. I love you, Megan, and I, I love want you too. in my life, but, but we I'm need just help. destroyed at this point. I don't know where to go. Okay. And Megan, I've never not loved you, okay? Okay. You've been loved from the second I brought you home in an airplane, okay? <laughs> that we couldn't get along and that it was driving us apart and with all the challenges we faced with doing homework on a night-to-night -night basis with you. I mean, it really created a horrible family dynamic. Yeah. Between all that time, it I've has. loved you. And that's why you keep coming back time after time after time, because know, we, 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 keep, we, keep, we keep doing that because we love you, and, and I want the best for change. you. And Well, let's start now. Let's start the change yeah, now. We do. Please. Did you get your answer? Yes, sir, I did. What was the answer that you got? <laughs> that I was wrong, that you guys do love me, and that you didn't want to start a family, and that life happens. I would have done something completely different if I had a parenting handbook that gave me, say, oh, you do the, you do, your child does this, A, B, C. Go ahead. I actually wrote that. It's called Family First. <laughs> I do have that. There is and a, I read it. I, I did write it. It's called Family First, and there is a chapter in there called Reparenting. Oh, uh, is that what we're so doing you now? Get, you get a second bite at the apple. Uh, so they do come with a manual. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to need one of those. You, you do. Yes, you do. Um, <laughs> that's it. Family First. You, know, you said she's made a lot of really bad choices. You've made a lot of really yes, bad choices along the way, and and the good thing about it is you're willing to sit here today and acknowledge that and yes. say, yes, I did yell, I did scream, I, I did hit, I did things I should not have done. That is no way to parent a child, right. and I, I can see that now, and but I, I have the result of this, and I don't know what to do about this. And, and I also hear you saying, I don't want to compound the problem by continuing to make errors. 
and I don't want you parenting out of guilt and continuing to compound the issue. And I'm going to put some verbs in my sentences and tell you what needs to happen so this child is born into a family of joy and peace instead of chaos and turmoil. We'll be right back. Okay, let me, let me have the floor here for a few minutes because I'm going to tell you what I think needs to happen here and then I'm going to tell you how I'm prepared to help you do it. Now, first off, let me be real clear. The goal here is for this baby to be a joy in everyone's life, not a burden. You're the mother, this is your baby, and you need to configure yourself in a way that you can raise this baby, be responsible for this baby, nurture this baby, and teach this baby what it needs to grow into a, a toddler and a child and a teen and be a, a, a contributing member of this society. That's your job. And to do that, you need to get your ducks in a row. And they're scattered to hell right now, so we need to get them lined up. And that's not going to be easy, but it's doable. You guys can be part of the solution here. You've been part of the problem, so it's time to be part of the solution. Long-suffering is not fixing. Long-suffering, what she's been doing, long-suffering, what y'all been living, is not contributing to a solution. That's just long-suffering. Mm -hmm. And doing the right thing for six months can overcome doing the wrong thing for six years. If you'll just do the right thing, time heals nothing. Doing the right thing can heal everything. And that's what I want to happen. Look, you guys are at a time in your life where you've looked forward to relaxing and enjoying. And I, I know how airlines work. You, you've been an airline pilot. You guys can fly all over the world and see the world and enjoy. And, and you ought to be able to go to Rome and be able to FaceTime back and see the baby and everybody laughing and having some joy. Right. You're not, not wondering, like, oh, God, what now? We don't want that Wouldn't anymore. it be nice if, if yeah. when, you, when, the, when your FaceTime went off, you said, hey, maybe it's the baby. Yeah. We can see the baby. Yeah. Instead of like, yeah. well, what is it now? Now, you got to be willing to put some effort in to get there. And, we, and to do that, we've got to create a new history because it's true. The best predictor of future behavior is relevant past behavior. And so right now... The best predictor of what's going to happen in the next couple of years is what's happened in the last couple of years. And that's going to be true unless something happens to change the flow of things. And I want this, you being here today, to be the first step in something happening to change the way this river flows. Yeah. Yeah. And Maybe to change the way a river yeah. flows takes something significant right. to happen. And this is something that you need to work at with a plan. There, there needs to be a, a family plan put in place here. And this begins with you. Okay, this begins with you. This place you're living, looking like that. It's not okay. That's yeah, Okay. That's putting it mildly. Yeah, that's just, I mean, come on. And, and by the way, by the way, you're not a hoarder. You're not, I'm sorry, I, I, know, I know a hoarder when I see one. You're not a hoarder, you're lazy. <laughs> okay? So yesterday she told us, let's get together, Mom, let's go through this stuff. I go, this is not my stuff to go okay. through. Correction, I did not ask you, I asked Dad. <laughs> you need to clean this place up. Yes. Because, let me tell you, I'm trained in forensic psychology, and that means making determinations sometimes about fitness of a parent. You don't want somebody doing a home visit like that, no. No, no, you don't. In fact, you want to burn those pictures and you want to clean that to place me. up. You're not working right now. You yeah. need to clean that place up Thank so you. it is sanitary because that is what your mind looks like right now. That's what your emotions look like right now. That is a mirror to your life. Yes, it is. So we're going to clean that up and get that organized, okay? And I will get you some help doing that. I will send over a service that's going to help you do that. All right? 
we're going to do some family counseling here, just as though you were still all under one roof, because there are going to be some guidelines here. We're going to stop talking about topics and start dealing with issues. Topics are what happened today, who said what to who, who did it, 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 it. that stuff changes every day. The underlying issues here are what are really important. And that is what this family is going to be based on. They didn't adopt you because they didn't want a child. They adopted you because they did want a child. You are not a child now. You are an adult, but you are their adult child. And they have the right to expect you to do certain things if you want to be in their life. And you have the right to expect them to honor certain things about you in your life if they're going to be in your life. And those are what we call boundaries. Boundaries and expectations. And those things are going to need to be defined and we're going to start conducting ourselves in a way where we treat each other with dignity and respect. And there's going to be a requirement for you to do a lot of forgiveness of these people and their flaws and fallacies. And they're going to have to do a lot of forgiveness of you with the hell that you've brought into their lives. But then we're going to hit the reset button and start working forward with the help of very trained, highly skilled professionals that structure this in a way where it moves forward. Putting you on the street is not required. Continuing to support you for the rest of your life financially is not required. We are going to set up a goal that has a date certain down the road where you are going to be independent. And it's not just going to be you have now until then to do it. We're going to set up the steps for you to achieve that. And you're going to have to be facing some new things like child care and all of this. That's all doable. These are not built-in babysitters. They're there to spoil this child when you're not looking. <laughs> and, <do. laughs> and, but there will be times that you're going to need child care because you're going to be a working mother. And all of this is going to start and end with you. And that's going to be with you learning to respect yourself and value yourself so you don't let people treat you in a way that puts you at risk. You are a mother, and you're the only mother this child is ever going to have, and you need to treat her with dignity and respect. Value her, value her safety, and require her to do what she needs to be to be this child's mother. And you're going to need some help working that out and putting the past in your rearview mirror. Because if you live your life looking over your shoulder, then your past does become your future, and we're not going to let that happen. Okay? Now, I'm going to get you, I'm going to get you some professionals to come in here and work on this. Now, first Thank thing we're going to do is get this pigsty cleaned up uh. so you have a place to live. But who pays for that? We do? Who pays for what? To clean up this place now? He said he I'll was do offering it. to help. Well, you're offering. <laughs> oh, but I mean, there's a place with no wall. No, no, no. No, no, I got that part. I'm just going, there's a the place with thank, no wall. I want to thank two of my guests today. Um, and a special thank you to Sacramento professional organizers who have agreed to clear Megan's home and to the Maids of Folsom for agreeing to do the necessary cleaning. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Also, don't forget, you can subscribe to my podcast called Fill in the Blanks. It's free. Just hit subscribe and see what I'm doing there. We'll see you next time.